the hard truth. Our books are not introducing teens to hard topics. They are simply the resource needed so that they can understand the hard topics that they are living out day to day. Finally, as a black queer person, I know what it's like to read books that don't tell my story. So in this hunt to protect teens, does it ever cross your mind that removing or restricting this life-saving story for LGBT students only harms them more? Or how removing this life-saving story for black teens harms them? Or do you not care because that's really what this fight is over? Removing LGBTQ stories and black stories. My name is Kay Johnson and George is my son. As a child, he was always busy. He would read a lot and he played basketball, football, dance, sing. He was just a normal kid. You knew from an early age that George was a leader. That was always very evident. And George always spoke their mind. And he, George never backed down. Um, was always in the mix. He was always very opinionated, always very opinionated. And if he had something to say, he would stand on it. He would write and I knew <laughs> that him writing was going to go somewhere. There are a lot of special talents and gifts and abilities within the family. So George deciding to stand in that gift wasn't something unusual. Um, what is unusual is the acclaim that has come George's way, but I'm also not surprised by it because I'm a firm believer that when you operate in your gift, that the doors to be able to express that gift will open for you. So as George continued to operate in their gift, the doors opened. So it's like, okay, I got a book deal. Like, you know, oh, I'm on the New York Times bestseller list. Oh, I'm gonna be on TV. Oh, Gabrielle Union wants to turn my book into a TV show. These are all things that are surprising, but not unexpected. My name is Sarah Elder. My initial feelings about the banning of all boys aren't blue and, and the messages coming out against George. Um, of course, first reaction is where they at? What we doing? Where we going? Um, you know, but making sure that George is okay, uh, first and foremost, and then what can we do to support and help you through this. I wanted to be everywhere he was. I wanted to argue with the people. I and, and I wasn't going to change anybody's opinion. That's your opinion. But you're not going to attack him. And definitely, you're not going to stop him from getting a message across to people, especially young adults who are struggling to identify and help their own self out of what they're going through. And All Boys Aren't Blue and books similar to it have an important impact in helping them to understand. And unfortunately, there's so many families that choose not to have the conversations, choose not to accept uh, who their children are. And I feel like this book is a safe space for some of these young adults. When George contacted us and he said, I can't come home to go to Glen Ridge Library. He said, would you and Aunt Sarah and Aunt Munch be willing to go if I wrote a letter? And if they allow you to read the letter, would you read it? Of course, because his book wasn't the only one being banned. So now we got to step up for everybody. Because you're not only attacking George, you're attacking everybody else who just wants to tell their story. So if you're talking about banning or challenging the book, you're talking about banning or challenging who George is and who people like George are. And what you're really saying is that you don't want these people to exist. My name is Stephanie Elderlaw. Even though my name is Stephanie, everybody calls me Aunt Munch. Our family is loving 
but I love it's heavy and it's not quiet and you will know if somebody belongs to us you will know that they belong to us so as an aunt of course I want to confront anybody who wants to publicly come out and say that my nephew doesn't have a right to exist or people like my nephew don't have a right to exist. My thoughts going into that meeting, yes, I was nervous. I didn't know what to expect. So now you're looking around and you're wondering, you know, how far are we gonna go with this? You know, are we gonna get physically attacked? So then you just go on the defense and you say, God, cover us and move forward. And we pulled onto the block and saw the response that was in the street. They marched from a, a parking area to the school where the meeting was held. And to see the signs and the police presence was kind of like, wow. Like, this is major. I was really overwhelmed, and I love the fact that in that small community, overwhelmingly white, overwhelmingly wealthy, that those folks decided to say, not in our town, that this small group of eight people are not going to tell us what we can allow our children to have access to. It's a sad day when people have decided that the baby folks who have not killed a single student is more important than the baby of God. That was surreal to see that just reading that letter and how it impacted everyone in that room, it, undescribable. And last story. If you don't want your child to read it, that's fine. You have every right to not allow your child to read it. But you don't need to trample on the rights of parents like my mother and my aunts who have raised her. Now, my sister Sarah did an amazing job reading that letter and I think we gave off an impression of George belongs to us and by extension the work that George puts into the world belongs to us and we're going to stand here to support it and defend it. Listening to the young adults and their reaction to the book and even adults coming up to us to say the book gave me a different perspective the book allowed me to have a different conversation with my own child. That is just such an amazing and awesome thing. There's an agenda out here in the world, and it is certainly not to indoctrinate little children to become members of the LGBTQ community. You know, the indoctrination is to try and make everyone fall in line and, and be who the they think everyone should be and the path everyone should follow. We should not ever be at a point in this country where we're talking about the banning of ideas. I want to be as free as anybody else is. And we do that through the books that we read, through the books that we write, through the music we create, through the music we consume. Freedom of expression is everything. George knows that we love him so much and we are so very proud. Now that we are truly, as a family, in this fight, we will not only continue to fight for George, but we'll continue to fight for all the other voices that are out there that people are trying to suppress.